everyone, this is my labour and delivery story. I am filming this on a different day because when I did go film it, um, Everly was playing up. So I decided to film it today before I go away. So then I have a couple of videos to put up while I'm away. And I think I'm going to film some vlogs if I possibly can. Um, I may have to grab Everly during this video. But yeah, I apologise for that in advance because she will not go to sleep. So anyway, I managed to turn up the input and my microphone in my webcam, um, so it'll be a bit louder. So yay. Anyway, my labour and delivery story, let's go. So, where am I going to start? I wrote it in my pregnancy journal. Um, it's like five pages long, but I am going to condense it a little so that it isn't as long as I wrote it. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so on the Sunday of the 15th of June, I was 41 weeks pregnant and I just felt like I was incapable of going into labour. I was like getting to the point where I was just feeling huge and I was just over it. And so I had a special appointment with my midwife on the Sunday at my local birth care to do a non-stress test. Kawana was there, so the non-stress test is basically when they put two straps on your stomach, one to monitor contractions that you are unaware of and the other one is to check your baby's heart rate to see whether your baby is okay during those contractions. And so we were on that for literally probably half an hour. I had to drink a ton of water. She made me drink so much water because she said I could have been a little dehydrated because baby's heart rate was normal but it was a little on the lower side. So. Anyway, I was on there for half an hour and um, she said there was a few little niggles there but nothing that I was feeling so she was just like, okay, we'll wait till Tuesday. Um, she asked me if I wanted a non uh, it was a stretch and sweep which is basically when she goes in um, vaginally and kind of tries to start things. Um, yeah, so I was just like, no, because I didn't want to be induced and I didn't want to stretch and sweep. So she was like, okay, well, if you don't go into labor naturally, I will do it on Tuesday because we were going to talk about induction plans on Tuesday. Okay, that night I went to bed and I didn't realize that those were going to be the last kicks I ever felt from her because I did feel some while I was in labor, but I was just so concentrating on pushing that they were just like... I wasn't appreciating them, so those are the last proper kicks that I could probably appreci properly appreciate. And so, I went to bed, I fell asleep on my iPad watching Suburgatory, and Kawan was up playing games, which he really should have been getting sleep because he was really tired the next day, and he was like, oh, I'm so tired, you know. And so, anyway, I woke up at 6.30 in the morning with the most strangest sensation in the world like I cannot describe it to you but it just made me feel like I needed to go to the toilet so I got up to go to the toilet and I made it probably 10 centimeters away from the toilet and my water broke so I stood there in shock for a while I thought I'd peed myself a little but then I realized it was my water that had broken and I called out to my partner and I was like babe I think my water just broke and he was half asleep and my mum was like should I go to work because my mum was coming in the delivery room with me just as extra support and in case Kawana got tired of like you know doing things for me while I was in labour because I didn't know how long I was going to be in labour for oh she goes should I go to work and I said I don't know nothing started I don't know when it will start and she's like okay I will go and have a shower so nothing had started it was about 7 30 and I went for a shower and I got out of the shower and it was the most unbelievable pain that had ever hit me I was like ouch because I just stood there like ow yeah it hurt so bad so anyway I went um I didn't get dressed I ended up being in my dressing gown and I stood in between I stood in between the bathroom and my bedroom in the kind of the hallway door frame and I just kind of collapsed and my mum ended up having to get me a bucket because I don't know why but the way I cope with pain is I throw up and I throw up at least four times and I throw
threw up with my tattoo when I got it. It's just the way I deal with pain and I know that's just what I've come to terms with is the way I deal with pain is I throw up. So she had to get me a bucket and she got me a wet sack and come on I started to get dressed and my mum had previously called my midwife before when my water had broke but nothing had happened and she told me to call her when they were three to four minutes apart and you know how you see on movies how they're like doing their washing or cleaning up their house or like packing their bags and having breaks between the contractions. I do not know what that feels like because I didn't have breaks between my contractions until I was pushing and they were just coming like one after another so painfully that my mum called my midwife and she was like okay we'll come in. So the birth care where I decided to have the baby was an hour away. I basically decided that I wanted it there just because it was four minutes away from the hospital and me being a first time Mum, I was really scared of what could happen and the birth care here was an hour away from the hospital and the one I chose was four minutes. So I preferred that. It was one of the best decisions and the worst decisions for me because one, I loved the place where I gave birth. Um, it was amazing. The people were so helpful. It was clean. It felt hygienic. I just really liked it. But it wasn't like hygienic to the point of a hospital sterile, sterile hygienic. It just felt clean. <laughs> My baby is having a talk to herself. Um, anyway, so it was the worst decision because I ended up going to labour, into labour around peak hour traffic on a Monday, on a weekday where everyone was going to work. So we got stuck behind every traffic light and every roundabout and it felt like the longest car ride I've ever, ever had. I remember looking out the window of the car while I was having a contraction and thinking that we were almost there and we had got five minutes from my hometown. So that's kind of can tell you how long that the car ride felt because it literally felt like we had almost got there and we had barely left. Um, so anyway, we got there and Kawana dropped me off by the door and went to park the car and I walked into the birth centre and my midwife was standing in the hallway and we went into birth centre two and she tried to get me to lie on my back but I kind of refused. I did not want to lie on my back. I heard that it made it worse and being in the car showed me that sitting in one place was not what I wanted to do at all. So she ended up getting me on my back and she wanted to check how dilated I was and she was thinking I was 3 to 4 centimetres and she was wondering what the hell she was going to do with me because literally I would have had to like wait there for ages and see like until I was dilated because I couldn't get in the pool because you weren't allowed in there until you were over 6 to six centimeters or something like that. So when she finally did get me on the bed she asked me how far along I thought I was and I was in so much of a wreck I said I don't know. She basically said well you're seven to eight centimeters along and you are a hundred percent effaced, basically thinned out. Um, and we were just basically in shock. I must have been in silent labor but I could definitely tell that I was very far along from how far apart my contractions were because I was not getting a break as I said before. So anyway she asked if I wanted her to run the pill and I was like hell yes because I just wanted some sort of pain relief and I was kind of too far along for any like epidurals or anything and the birth care centre I was at didn't offer those and I was in the pill and my entire labour the only pain relief I had was water, drinking water, they made me drink a ton of water, water surrounded in the pool like the heat and also back massages which my back felt so rubbed raw it was the most painful thing ever and then yeah so I got in the pool and I leaned over the side and I swear to you every I swear every single person leant including myself leant on the controls and made the spa bath actually turn on it was so annoying and it was so distracting and there was someone mowing their lawns outside I remember that so annoying but anyway they ended up getting me to kind of lie on my back in the pool but I wasn't actually on my back I had Kawana holding one leg my midwife holding my arm 
and my mum holding my leg in my arm or something, something like that, I know that. And I was pushing for a very, very long time. I remember my midwife saying that Everly would be here by quarter past one and she didn't come till 1.53pm. So I was pushing for probably two hours and it was the most insane thing ever. He was born at 7 pound 4 ounces, born at 1.53pm on the 16th of June 2014 on a Monday and they put her out on my chest and she wanted to breastfeed straight away and the midwife said that because I had done it naturally they don't often see that and that was amazing, she was so alert, um, she had a score, APGAR score of 9 and then 10 because she barely cried. Um, she came out with kind of a happy baby which was amazing. Um, looking around with her big eyes. You cannot explain how much love you have for someone you've never met until you have a baby because it is the most insane feeling in the world. The car wanted to cut the cord and we sat in the, I sat in the bath thing for about an hour and I decided that it was getting too hot and I want I wanted to get out of there because I'd been in there pretty much my entire labor which was about seven hours or so which was pretty good for a first birth don't you agree um weird hand thumb thing I got out and I laid on the bed I lay on the bed and she had to go in and get the placenta manually because it would not come out on its own and it was in there for at least an hour after my birth, which I know is not common and I did not enjoy giving birth to a placenta at all. It was one of my least favourite parts that I was looking forward to. And then my grandmother arrived and my uncle and my midwife transferred my mum and my grandmother and my uncle into the postnatal room which is room number 10 and I had a shower while Kawana held Everly and oh he cut the cord did I say that he said it was the most weirdest feeling in the world I think I already told you that oh well and my midwife told me to pee in the shower and I was just like okay sure I'll do whatever and I forgot to that everyone had told me how much it stings when you give birth and then you pee and I forgot and it was the most painful thing and I was in agony in the shower and then I got out, got changed and my midwife wheeled my baby down to the postnatal room and she, oh and I carried all my bags and kind of carried the rest of the bags and yeah we were in there for two nights and they helped kind of breastfeed and they gave me Lone Star meals, which was amazing, although they didn't offer Carlin a meal, so he ended up having to get his own food, and we had so many visitors, and fun fact, I actually had to go home without any shoes on, because I arrived in bare feet, because I was that frazzled when I arrived, that I didn't even remember to put on shoes, so I ended up leaving bare feet, but it was okay. She's tired, but she won't go to sleep, so yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the story of the worst and the best day of my life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys had an amazing birth or a terrible birth or anything, let me know kind of what pain relief you used. Um, whether your plan went to plan, whether your birth plan went to plan, because mine kind of did. Um, yeah, tell me how your birth went, because I'd love to know. And if you have a birth story... On your channel please uh, write down your channel name and I'll go look it up so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching and don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and I'll leave all those links down below yeah bye